In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a simple AI assistant from scratch using Amazon Bedrock and Anthropic's Claude V2 large language model. By the end of this video, you'll have a working chat bot like this, where you can ask simple questions and input other variables. I've chosen a language variable, but you'll be able to customize this however you want. Maybe you want it to be the style of Shakespeare uh, versus some other famous author. You can input all these different variables into your prompt from this simple little interface. And all this is going to be done using a Python framework called LangChain and the Amazon Bedrock service, particularly using the Claude V2 model. However, what's great about this particular project is by changing a single line of code, you could move between Anthropic, Amazon, and AI21 lab models or Cohere models or any other models that show up in Bedrock in the future as you please. And before we jump in the code, while you're here in Bedrock, you need to go down to model access and you actually need to manage model access and turn on access to whatever models that you want to use for this. I personally asked for access to the Anthropic Claude models and I got access almost instantly after I filled out a form, um, but you can use any of the models here for this exercise. I am going to do my best to explain every concept along the way. However, if I use terminology that you don't understand or something's unclear, just try to keep moving forward because really I think getting hands on and starting to experiment with this stuff is the best way to understand how it works. Even if you're a beginner, even if it's a little overwhelming to start, by the way, this should only cost a couple of cents to test and build. So very cheap to play with. Let's jump into the code. All right. So a few things up front. Uh, this is a simple flat main.py file. I've also, before coding here in VS Code, I've downloaded the AWS extension and I've logged in with a profile named Trevor. You're going to have to log in via the AWS extension via some role that can be passed in if you want to do this on your local machine. But the code we're writing could also be launched on an EC2 instance or something else where you could just apply a simple AWS IAM role to accomplish the same thing. First, we're going to build the prompt and the prompt template for Claude V2, and then we're going to build that simple UI that we saw a moment ago with Streamlit. So to get started, I'm going to pass some import statements here. Um, all the code that I type today will be hosted on GitHub. So check that out in the description if you are a little bit more advanced and you don't need a step-by-step -step walkthrough. Okay. The important thing here, if you take a look, you need to have Boto3 installed, Streamlit installed, and LangChain installed on your system. For me, that looked like going to the terminal and typing pip3 install lane chain, uh, Boto3, etc. Okay. So if you hit errors, make sure you have all of these installed via Python. Next, I just need to define the profile that I'm going to use to access this. Again, this, this is the one thing that's going to be very specific uh, to you. And I'm using a profile named Trevor. Again, just to be clear, that's because this is the profile I created when I logged in via the AWS plugin to my Visual Studio code. So the only thing that will change in this code for you is this if you're developing on your local machine. Okay, now I'm going to start actually writing the code to define the prompts and set up the application. So one of the first things I need to do is actually create a Bedrock client. So how you do that is really just by defining a variable. I'm going to call mine Bedrock client. And now we're going to reference the Boto3 and I just want to basically set this variable to say, like, in the, anytime this is called, uh, reference the Bedrock service. So that means the service name equals Bedrock and the region name is US East 1 for me. All right, now I'm going to choose a model. And I'm specifically going to be running the Claude V2 model. So to define that, what you can do is actually go back into the bedrock service in AWS, and you'll see the model ID is going to be in the sample code for any model. So I, again, if you wanted to experiment with something that isn't Claude V2 via the bedrock service, you would just go to that model and then pick out the model ID. Therefore, my model ID is going to be that one from Anthropic that I just copied. Again, all you need to do now is change this variable if you want to use a different model experiment with that. Pretty cool. All right, now we're going to get into LangChain. So LangChain is a Python uh, and JavaScript framework that is used specifically to build complex AI applications it's called LangChain because you build chains and you can chain together prompts and other databases that you're going to reference or web scrapers like things that scrape Wikipedia or that pull information from various sites. So LangChain is something that if you're going to build an AI application, you should probably just start 
by using that framework, okay? Uh, and so in Langchain, you oftentimes are gonna define your model. So I'm defining my model as a bedrock model. Just as a reminder, that was imported via the Langchain LLM's bedrock statement at the top here, okay? All right, so for this, I just need to give it a model ID, which I already have, equals model ID. And I need to give it that client that I defined earlier too. And you can also pipe in model keyword arguments, okay? So that is, think of that as like settings that you can send in to the model. Okay, so what I actually just did with the model keyword argument statement is I set the max tokens and this max tokens can be moved up or down effectively to save cost. This limits the length of inputs and outputs from the model. And then temperature is another thing that you can set that effectively controls model creativity. So I'm just putting these in here. You can experiment with these and change them up a little bit to see how that changes the behavior of the application. But these keyword arguments are just something you can send in to control your model whenever you're hitting the Bedrock API. So that's my LLM that's defined. Now I'm gonna actually build my chatbot function, okay? So I'm gonna start by defining my function and I'm gonna name it my chatbot. And in this chatbot, I'm gonna pass in two variables. If you remember in that little web app I had, I could select the language and then I could ask a question. So I'm gonna call those arguments that I'm passing in language and freeform text because I want people to be able to really ask anything of the chatbot. All right, so I started defining my chatbot and Code Whisperer finished the code and it's the right code. So I guess I'm just gonna use what Code Whisperer gave me. Download Code Whisperer if you're learning code, it is helpful. So we're gonna create a prompt template. In Langchain, a prompt template is simply a way to structure a prompt that can be sent kind of like in this cookie cutter way. And so you know, if you're building applications, you're gonna reuse prompts over and over again. And now I can just reference this prompt template in my function to keep sending the same prompt to an app. So uh, I'm going to make my input variables language and freeform text. If you remember earlier, those were the inputs available within the app that I built. And then the template itself, the actual prompt template is instructions to Claude saying, hey, you're a chatbot, you're in language X, and, and I'm going to support a few different languages. And then you can input the freeform text. Now, what's awesome about this function is you can now use this as a baseline to pass any argument into a prompt template. If you want language is one option, but again, you might want it to be writing style or you might want it to be a type of response like a haiku or a poem or a song. And the, these are like fun things that you can now experiment with because you have this kind of basic uh, code. And I'll, I'll even say language is not the best feature to experiment with. I'm gonna change it from language to something else probably. I may even take this out of my code entirely, but I wanted to put both of these arguments in the function. So you could use this as a template to continue iterating off of. Anyway, got my input variables uh, and I've got my prompt template set. So everything looks good to me. Now I just need to build my chain. So I got, I'm going to say my bedrock chain. And this is where I'm going to go ahead and reference everything that I already did. And I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, with my LLM chain, my LLM is the LLM, that bedrock LLM that I defined. And my prompt is the prompt that I set in this function. Now I just need to create a variable to save the response so I can actually output that in my app later. So my response is gonna be bedrock chain. And I'll be passing language as language and freeform text as freeform text. All right, so I've got the response. I'm gonna say return uh, that response. Right now we actually have a functioning prompt that we can start playing around with. So next I'm gonna build that little web application so you can have a nice little visual interface for it. But before I wanna test this out with you so you can see it working. So to test this out and make sure it's working, I just wanna define a print statement, my chatbot, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna send it English and I'm gonna ask it the question, which country, has the largest economy. And I'm gonna run this. Okay, so I just ran my code and there were some errors. <laughs> so I'm gonna go back and kind of um, fix these with you live. We can do a little bit of uh, live debugging here together. So errors that I hit, I forgot a comma, always with the comma uh, at the end of this. I also actually misspelled this. I had this as lowercase, but it needs to be uppercase. So if you were following along step by step, 
you'll probably have to fix that or you'll hit an error if you're using the same uh, same method. And then finally, in the keyword arguments, this uh, I had this set as a string in quotations, but it needs to just be a number. So uh, clean that up if you hit an error. And now I'm going to run this. And I'm actually going to run this uh, simply by running a print function on my chatbot. So if you look down here, I've said print. I'm going to call my chatbot function. And then I'm going to say, um, give me the language of English and ask the question, who is Buddha? I'm going to go ahead and run this Python file. And amazingly, as LLMs will do, it has responded with information. It gave me information about the Buddha, his history, the timelines, blah, blah, blah. What you would expect an LLM to respond to in English when asked that question. That's pretty cool. Now we just want to build a very simple front end interface. And I'm going to use what is currently one of my favorite projects called Streamlit. Streamlit is this super, super simple Python language that you can use to create little web applications. Uh, to create this Streamlit app, I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to give it a title. So really, you're just defining these different sections and giving your user the opportunity to pass in variables. So I'm going to define uh, the title. We call it Bedrock Chatbot. I had my name, Trev's personal assistant, but you can name this whatever you would like to call it. This doesn't really affect the functionality. And so really all I have to do here is create the options for people to put input the language variable and the prompt itself. So language is equal to streamlit sidebar, which you'll see what that looks like here in a second, select box language. And again, Code Whisperer is doing its thing. It's giving me the option of English or Spanish. I could actually add many more options here if I wanted to. Again, language may not be the best example here. This is just giving you something to pass into the prompt uh, that you can experiment with. Maybe you have a better idea than I do on language. All right, maybe you like writing styles or poems or whatever. So anyway, language is here, looking good. So the language is going to be set by the sidebar selector. And then finally, I just need to find a way to put in the actual prompt, the freeform text that somebody would type in to ask the model uh, to do that. I'm just going to say, if language is set. So basically, once somebody selects the language, then they're going to be given the option to input the freeform text via the sidebar. And I'm going to set a label to, so it kind of prompts, what is your question? And just for the sake of it, I think you would want to do this in real life. I'm going to set the max characters to 100. So that way, um, I nobody could rack up costs for this by putting in a lot of characters. I'm the only one using this, so I, I'm not going to exploit it and put in more than 100 characters. However, this is probably what you would want to do to prevent somebody from inputting massive uh, context into the, the application. Okay, and here is the final statement. This is really what makes it run in the web app is I'm going to say if the freeform text is set. So if somebody types in the freeform text into the prompt, then the, I'm going to set a response to call the my chatbot function that I created earlier. And then I'm going to pump in the language and freeform text variables that again would be set via the UI that you're going to see here in just a second. And then finally, I'm just going to tell the app to write a response. And that should be <clears throat> all she wrote. I'm going to comment out my test print from earlier. And now I'm just going to run this code. And um, what because this is a Streamlit app, I found that actually I needed to run it with a different command than just clicking the run button here to launch the Streamlit app on the server. So I found that I actually needed to run it like this, where I would say Python 3-m Streamlit run file name, in my case, main.py. All right, it's likely that the folks watching along earlier caught this, but I just tried to run my code and there's a typo. It's right there. Uh, the 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 Python helper is making it very clear. I said side bat needs to be sidebar. I think everything is good now. So I am going to attempt to run my uh, streamlet run command again. All right. So it seemed like after I fixed side bat to sidebar, uh, we should be working now. Let's take a look. And now I actually have a app running. So let's test this out. English. I can ask any question here. What does GDP stand for? It got our response. It actually is telling us back what we sent into the model, freeform text, and 
uh, GDP, which is awesome. And then uh, it's going to send the response back here. Now, if I, I just want to clean up one final thing here. I'm going to go back into my code editor. That text field here, I just want to strip that out because I don't really, in my app, I don't really need people to see what they sent in. I really just want the text to show up on the screen. So I just need to go into my response here and I'm going to specify to uh, only strip out the text piece. So I'm going to save this and rerun my application with that command, Python 3m streamlit run pi. All right, so now everything looks good. I should be able to ask it the same question here. And by adding that little text piece to the code, it should just strip out the response and show a more clean output. So let's find out. And looky there, it's giving me a great answer to what is GDP. And I now have the start of a chatbot. Very simple piece of code here that you can now iterate on and that I'm gonna use to continue to build a more personalized assistant. Specifically, what I plan to do is turn on some agents so that way the chatbot can go reference things like there's agents to reference Wikipedia and to do math and some other things like that. So I'm going to bring in some agents to the chatbot to expand what it's capable of. And I'm also going to create some custom instructions that are very specific to me so that way I can pass it in via something called resource augmented generation or RAG. But ultimately what that means is just having a bunch of data that can be referenced in addition to whatever data the large language model was trained on. So that's kind of the next steps for me. I'll try to make YouTube videos about it if I continue to iterate on this and, and get it working. But for now, I hope this has set you up with some very basic code. Go ahead and check out the GitHub repo in the description if you want the full picture of the final code that I am about to upload here in just a second. Thanks a lot. And let me know if you have any questions. All right. Peace.